I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and in this Cisco certification exam video, we're going to take a look at the OSI model and review some basics at each layer, but this is not just a review of the model. I know this is one of those things you run into when you begin your studies and you look at it and you say, okay, i got to memorize these layers, and maybe you use one of those cute little acronyms to remember the order of the layers, but you've got to know what's going on at each layer, not just for the exam, but also for the real world. So I, again, I know it's one of those things where you, when you're learning it, you think, how am I ever really going to use this? Well, I'm going to tell you how you're going to use it after we review a little of what's going on at each particular layer. With the application layer, this is the layer where the end users themselves interact with the network. And we're starting our review, of course, from the top layer down. I've listed some protocols and services there that run at layer 7, the application layer. And don't forget about Telnet in there because people tend to think that's strictly layer 3 because we're putting in an IP address, but it does run at layer 7 of the OSI model. There is authentication involved. So let's move down one layer to the presentation layer and really there's one simple question being asked here. How should this data be presented? And in addition to the proper formatting of data, this is also where encryption takes place. The session layer, the session layer is really like the boss of the entire thing. It's the manager of this two-way communication between two remote endpoints. And this is actually the layer that handles the creation, the maintenance, and the teardown of communications between those two hosts. At the transport layer, we know what happens here. TCP and UDP are running here. And boy, you've got to know both of those protocols inside and out, especially to pass your CSENT and CCNA exam. I've got some videos on YouTube and on my website that can help out as well, but you've really got to have the differences and the similarities down cold for your Cisco exams. Just an exam tip there for your studies. Now, the network layer, this is where you and I as network admins actually start having a great deal of interaction with the network. This is where the internet protocol runs, and since routers operate at layer 3, this layer is often called the routing layer. Another exam tip for those of you particularly new to studies, in networking we really don't like to have just one name for everything. We like to have three or four. So that's just something else to be aware of there. Because really, in a nutshell, routing is a two-question process. What valid paths exist from the local router to a given destination? And what is the best path to take to get there? And note that I say paths here. Because we want more than one path. We want redundancy. So if one path goes down, we've got another one. But we also have to make a decision when we have those multiple paths, which is the best path to get our packets to that particular destination. Now the data link layer, this is where pure switches, if you will, operate. Now there are layer 3 switches out there today, and they're becoming more and more popular, but that's not what we're concentrating on right now. A pure switch that has no routing capabilities is going to operate at layer 2. And three protocols that you'll definitely see on your CCNA exams and beyond, HDLC, PPP, and Frame Relay, those all operate at layer 2. Now the physical layer, whenever things get a little complicated, I always like to think, you know, it's all ones and zeros. That's really what networking is. We're taking ones and zeros and we're getting them to the right place. Because whatever data our end users are creating, it's eventually going to be translated, if you will, or turned into a stream of ones and zeros. You know, when you see technical school ads on TV, you know, they always have those streams of ones and zeros to make it look complicated, but it's not. It's the physical layer that handles the actual data transmission itself. And really, anything that has anything to do with a physical cable, whether it's the pins, the connectors, or the electrical current itself, that is said to be running at the physical layer. Now, having looked at each one of these layers in this review, I mentioned that it looks like one of these things you're going to learn and never use again, and that happens in every field, but that's not the case with the OSI model. Because one of the things we do in this business, probably more than anything else, is troubleshoot. 
you know, we don't get to go into our networks every day and install things from scratch or install routing protocols from scratch, but we're getting phone calls saying, hey, such and such isn't working. You know, what can I do about it? Or more, more importantly, what can you, the network admin, you and I, what can we do about it? Always start your troubleshooting at the physical layer. Sometimes, and this goes for all of us, sometimes we fall into the trap of looking for an exotic solution. You know, especially if we've just read a book or we're studying for an exam, it's like, hey, I read this last night, maybe this is it. Well, maybe that's it, but maybe the cable's just loose. And that happens. You know, cables get nudged. Things get unplugged. And don't expect your end user to say, yeah, I unplugged this, and now it doesn't work. They're probably just going to say, hey, such and such isn't working. But that's one reason you really want to know the OSI model inside and out is that when you are troubleshooting, especially uh, networking, you want to start at the physical layer and then work your way up, you know, is there a problem at the switching level? Then is there a problem at the routing level? 99% of our problems are going to be in those three layers anyway. But always start your troubleshooting with the physical layer. And even if a cable looks like it's in there, it never hurts to reseed it if it's already not working. So again, always start your troubleshooting at the physical layer. That will indeed save you a lot of time. Hope you enjoyed this quick review of the OSI model and some extra exam study tips there for you. Invite you out to the website, thebryantadvantage.com. Over 250 Cisco certification tutorials and videos just waiting for you. Actually, we're getting closer to 300, so we're growing all the time. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.